Chapter 79, Enhanced Serum. That night, Lion had a somewhat hazy experience. Alcohol couldn't make him completely intoxicated, but the faces that kept getting closer after drinking made him give up on thinking. In the end, it seemed like all sorts of strange things were happening. When he woke up the next morning and saw both Ada and Jill beside him, he understood what had been strange. The two of them still carried a hint of alcohol and were sleeping soundly. So Lion adjusted the blanket and chose to leave the room quietly. He went to the police station's shower room to wash off some of the blood stains on his lower parts. Not his own blood, of course. Then he changed into casual clothes, walking slowly into the research institute. Of course, Tony wasn't here at the moment. The last time Lion saw him the previous night, Tony was leading two women with big curls away around a corner. He probably wouldn't get up until well past noon today. In fact, there wasn't anyone else in the research institute right now. The celebration yesterday must have paused the activities of this newly established country for a while. Lyon simply began researching on his own. He ordered Jarvis to open Tony's research records from yesterday. Initially, he intended to pick up where Tony left off and continue the research. But he was surprised to find that the mutation rate of the S-virus infection had actually been reduced by 5% by Tony. This was essentially not much different from a true evolution serum. However, even for Tony, wasn't such progress unbelievably fast? Lyon sat down and carefully reviewed the electronic records. It turned out that Tony had been stuck midway through the experiment and had unsuccessfully attempted to fuse extremist virus. Finally, he had a sudden inspiration and chose to use his own blood as a medium, which led to a significant improvement in experimental efficiency. It must be said, the constitution given by the world consciousness. When it came to virus fusion, it was indeed a universal material. In the end, Tony analyzed the changes that occurred when the virus fused with his blood. He carefully fused the extremist virus with the S virus, reducing the mutation probability to 5%. This new hybrid virus, following Lyon's naming conventions, was called the S2 evolution virus by Tony. However, subsequent research did not progress smoothly. Even though Tony had found the right path, he couldn't further reduce the infection mutation rate of the virus. At the end of the research record, Tony left one final conclusion. The nature of the virus is to spread and mutate. To achieve complete safe evolution, we can't use a virus as the carrier. We need to find a new medium. Lyon read Tony's note thoughtfully. A new medium? Use the mold or the parasite? No, these won't work. They are unstable external agents. We need something else. But among the things I've encountered, there doesn't seem to be anything else that can enhance the body. Lion's gaze swept over the serum on the table, and suddenly an idea flashed in his mind. Wait, the super soldier serum? That's it! He excitedly pounded the table and stood up. Jarvis, do you have any classified information about the super soldier serum in your database? Like partial formulas or something? Master Lion, there is a related document in the main server cluster at Stark Industrial Park, but it is incomplete, Jarvis replied. Perfect, that's exactly what I need. Lion couldn't wait to activate his teleportation ability, disappearing from his original spot and reappearing in an instant. He inserted a USB drive into the computer, and a large amount of data on the super soldier serum popped up. Looks like there's really no chance of failure this time. Lion stroked his chin. Time quickly passed until noon. A sleepy-eyed Tony came into the lab, Inside the laboratory, when the precision hybrid synthesizer emitted a notification sound, the golden solution was poured into a transparent syringe. Admiration appeared on both Lion and Tony's faces. Look at her, how beautiful she is. Tony spread his hands like a blossoming flower showcasing the syringe. We've really done it. This moment, we are practically Prometheus Lion. Heh. Lion nodded. It can elevate any living being on this planet to a new level, evolving into a new species. To call it the fire from Zeus's hand wouldn't be an exaggeration. It's truly remarkable. He walked over to the instrument and picked up the syringe. The S-virus, E-mold, Plaga parasite, and the extremist virus. We used the super soldier serum's transformation method as a reference to merge all the mutation and evolution factors from these four evolutionary keys. This new serum has no infectivity, no side effects, only the step towards evolution. 
After injection, strength, physique, speed, and the brain will all be comprehensively enhanced to a superhuman level. The individual will also gain abilities such as virus immunity, super regeneration, limb extension, fungal control, parasitic hosting, and manipulation and control of extreme temperatures. Besides perfection, it's hard to find another suitable word to describe it. So what should we name this serum? How about SS type enhancement serum, since it's derived from the S virus? Lion listed out the features of the new serum while finally proposing a name. Tony found the name neither good nor bad. It lacks creativity. It's so powerful. How about Super Soldier Ultimate Serum? We've already surpassed Howard, that old guy. Not happening. I never expected you to be good at naming things anyway. It's decided, SS Type Enhancement Serum. Lion felt Tony's suggestion was lame. Your name isn't much better. Sounds like a cheap, mass-produced industrial product, Tony immediately retorted. But do as you like. It's your serum. Also, don't tell me you actually plan to distribute this serum globally, Tony frowned. That will inevitably cause more crises, more conflicts and contradictions. You surely know that. Of course not. Lion took two syringes. Did you forget our previous research results? He placed the three serums on the table, explaining each one. Look at these. This one is the SS1 type enhancement serum, which only contains the S virus traits. The one on the right is the SS2 type, based on SS1, but with the extremist virus traits added. And finally, we have the SS3 type we just synthesized, the perfect one. I've already thought it through. SS1 will be distributed globally, SS2 will be given only to trusted individuals, and SS3 is reserved for you. Lion patted Tony's shoulder. After all, the first two serums can be directly synthesized, but SS3 requires your blood as an ingredient. This one is destined to be exclusively yours. Wow, honestly, I'm so touched I'm about to cry. Tony said, leaning his head back. He exaggerated his expression. If you hadn't drawn 400 cc of my blood earlier, I'd definitely be crying now. Don't say that. It was all for the experiment. Come on, let me take you out for something good to replenish your blood. Lion wrapped an arm around Tony's shoulder. Something good? You mean the sticky oatmeal in this doomsday fortress? Tony had no high opinion of the food in Raccoon City. You said it's doomsday, so what do you expect? Lion was speaking when suddenly a wave of energy descended. His expression gradually became strange. Chapter 80, 79. Wings are growing day by day. What's with that expression? You look like you've just seen a ghost. Tony stopped, looking surprised. He remembered how Lion had looked in the forest yesterday. Ah, I get it. That world consciousness thing came back again, didn't it? Lion was stunned for a few seconds. When he regained his composure, his expression became odd as he nodded. What it was trying to say was complicated, but the gist is that the SS serum won't work. It wants the earlier version of the evolutionary agent that had infectious properties. What? Is it out of its mind to say something like that? Well, I guess it doesn't have a brain, Tony exclaimed. He found it strange. So why can't we use the SS serum? Because the SS serum is too stable and no longer has the potential for further evolution. Lion was exasperated. It wants something relatively stable, but that still has the potential for evolution, or rather, the potential to continue mutating. Tony crossed his arms. That's an interesting idea. It wants to keep evolving indefinitely? Sounds like the kind of advice Obama used to give me. He used to give you complex advice? Like suggesting a rainbow-colored black or something? Pretty much. So I usually just ignored him and did things my own way. Case closed. No wonder it wanted to get rid of you, Lion said. Maybe, but I'm not about to create a rifle that can heat, cool, and also provide navigation, just because he asked me to, Tony responded. Strange idea. It seems that every client in the world is odd, Lion said as he returned to the lab table. Fortunately, with the experience of developing the SS serum, creating a new type of S-virus is now a walk in the park. He had no intention of rejecting the world consciousness's request. After all, if something went wrong again in the future, it might come looking for him once more. And if it did, he figured, it would owe him some additional authority. By then, who would truly be the world consciousness might be up for debate. Lion mused to himself that if he really gained control over the world's evolution one day, he might pull the world consciousness out and give it to Jarvis as a companion.
That would be nice. Five minutes later. The final version of the S virus, with an infection mutation rate of only 0.1%, was successfully born. Its effect was almost indistinguishable from the initial prototype and perfectly met the requirements for evolving life on a global scale. After the new virus was synthesized, the world consciousness was indeed very satisfied. The world consciousness sent over an excited emotion, urging Lyon to quickly spread the virus, like a playful farm dog wagging its tail enthusiastically. All right, all right, let me have a meal with Tony first, then I'll find someone to test the virus on, Lyon assured repeatedly. Then he shrugged at Tony, and they both headed to the elevator of the research facility. As expected, most people had taken the day off after yesterday's celebration. The research institute was completely empty, with only Lyon and Tony there as they left. The police station had only a few officers on duty. On the way, Lyon complained that such a relaxed official institution would have a hard time managing a country effectively. It wasn't until they ran into Jill that Lyon found out that she, the newly appointed president, had given everyone a day off. The reason? Lyon had saved the world yesterday, so today was declared a new Thanksgiving. Heh! Lyon couldn't help but change his mind, marveling at how efficient this new government was. However, when he met Jill, the stunning beauty seemed to be in a bad mood. In the former police chief's office. A uh, Jill, what's going on with you? Lyon asked as he noticed Jill's displeased expression. Tony, sensing the tension, had already slipped away, taking the two curly-haired women from last night with him, heading who knows where. Shouldn't I be the one asking you that? What happened to you? Jill asked, placing her right hand on her hip. You did something so outrageous, yet you left Ada and me behind, disappearing for an entire day. I thought you had fled out of guilt. The term fleeing out of guilt refers to criminals. You shouldn't use it so casually, Lyon corrected. Last night, it was clearly you two, after drinking, who fought over it and decided to be together. You can't blame me for that. In fact, none of you were even that drunk. You were just tipsy, using alcohol as an excuse to do naughty things, he added. Jill's face turned red, and she turned away, avoiding eye contact. Even so, you shouldn't have left the two of us behind. I didn't abandon you two. I even tucked you in before I left, Lyon said, picking up a paper cup and filling it with water. I was just at the research lab, conducting experiments with my brother. No one told me there was a day off today. I was wondering why there were so few people around. He drank the water in one gulp, then looked towards the door. By the way, Ada, why are you hiding behind the door? The door creaked open. Ah, of course, I was waiting for you to call me in, Ada said as she pushed the door open and stepped inside, her steps still a bit unsteady. Her physical condition wasn't as robust as Jill's, and after being injured that night, she needed more time to recover. After all, I wouldn't want to interrupt a private conversation between my boss and her rival, Ada remarked with a sly smile. Jill narrowed her eyes at the word, rival. Shouldn't you be pretending not to hear and just walk away? Oh, really? I thought Miss President and I would be on the same team, Ada moved closer, teasing Lyon with her words. After all, compared to the two of us rookies, someone's skills are quite exceptional. Hmm. Jill hesitated for a moment, her gaze shifting towards Lyon. Ada's words seemed to resonate. No wonder it felt so intense back then. Could it be you've had more? Experience? Ahem, Lyon cleared his throat loudly, cutting off the conversation. Stop arguing, both of you. One's a president and the other's a bureau director. How can the country run if you're squabbling about sex during a crisis? Both women fell silent, surprised by how deftly Lyon diverted the tension. Lyon then spread his arms wide. So, I think, as colleagues, we should sit down and have a proper discussion. What problem can't be solved through communication? And if there is, it just means we haven't communicated enough. What communication? Let me finish asking my question. Mm hmm. Jill was cut off abruptly with a kiss. Oh dear, someone's impatient. Can't you wait for me? Ada shook her head and followed behind. The next morning, Lion woke up in a familiar bed. Feeling refreshed, he roused the two little elves beside him. After some morning exercise, they washed up together and headed out. In the police station lobby, the scene was vastly different from yesterday's emptiness. Today, the place was bustling with public officials coming and going. 
Tony was seated at a table having breakfast. His eyes were dark with heavy bags under them, his complexion pale. He looked utterly exhausted. Lion sat down beside him, grabbed a piece of baguette, and stuffed it into his mouth. The taste was indescribable, but he still chewed and swallowed it. Tony, were you up to no good again with those wavy-haired girls last night? Lion asked with a hint of judgment. Look at yourself, constantly indulging in those things. Do you even look like a scientist anymore? Lion immediately took the moral high ground. If you keep going like this, how can you face Pepper? Tony raised an eyebrow. Did I forget to pay her salary this month? I just gave her strawberries the other day. Come on, she's not even my girlfriend yet. How could I be betraying her? Pepper is allergic to strawberries, Tony, Lion said with a serious expression. Tony nodded as he ate his baguette with milk. Yeah, I know. She scolded me pretty harshly after I gave them to her. And rightfully so, Lion re -plied. Seeing Tony enjoying his meal, he couldn't help but take another bite of the get himself, only to find it just as tasteless as before. And what about you? Don't think I don't know what you've been up to the past couple of nights after the events ended, Tony teased, elbowing Lion. How do you explain yourself to that special agent back at your fortress? She's my subordinate, thank you very much, Lion said, grabbing a paper cup and pouring half of Tony's milk into it. Oh, just a subordinate, huh? Tony smirked and raised his milk cup, winking. All right then, here's to subordinates. Lion sighed, shaking his head. I can never win with you. Fine, here's to your wavy-haired girls, he said, clinking cups and downing the milk. But I still have to remind you, Lion continued, patting Tony's arm as he stood up. When you're about to enter back-to-back high-intensity operations, you should take care of your body. We're not exactly the same, you know. If I hadn't given that blood sample yesterday, I'd be in great shape right now. Tony tried to defend himself. That's why we're different. If I gave that much blood, I'd still be as energetic as ever. Yeah, yeah, rub it in, why don't you? Tony muttered, watching Lion walk away. After a moment of silence, Tony took a bite of his baguette, suddenly jumping up with determination. No way, I have to finish the live experiment and inject the serum as soon as possible. This is another world. I can't let that kid show me up. Chapter 81, National Strengthening, October 31st, Afternoon In the Raccoon City Police Department meeting room You mean you've already developed a virus with only a one in a, in a thousand chance of mutation after infection? Jill stood up abruptly, disbelief in her voice. Are you serious, Lion? She wasn't the only one. Everyone in the meeting room stood up as well. All kinds of expressions, surprise, excitement, and nervousness were directed at Lion and Tony, seated at the table. The virus that had left scientists around the world helpless. Now, in just two days, this pair of brothers had completely conquered it. At this moment, if someone were to shout, Stark is God, it seemed that everyone would be inclined to believe it. No need to be so excited, everyone. I understand you're probably thinking, Wow, did God play a joke on me when I woke up this morning? Tony nudged Lion aside, taking the spotlight for himself. But this is the reality. I guarantee, as Iron Man, the apocalypse is over. It ends today. He spread his arms dramatically, as if to embrace the whole world. But no one responded to him because everyone was still in shock, overwhelmed by the sudden miracle that had fallen into their laps. Ahem, you all, shouldn't you be doing something right now? Tony held the pose for a few seconds before awkwardly waving his hands. Like cheering, screaming, celebrating. The people in the meeting room snapped out of their daze, shouting to fulfill Tony's wish. They rushed forward, lifting him into the air and tossing him up, chanting Iron Man over and over. Lion quietly retreated to a corner, watching with a sigh as his brother was tossed into the air, grinning and yelling for them to throw him even higher. Your brother is quite... Different from you, Ada said, standing beside him. He's always like that, loves being the center of attention. Lion replied. That's not exactly what I meant. Haven't you noticed that you also like attention? Ada smirked. I mean he's more flamboyant and you like to stay low-key, only stepping into the spotlight when no one expects it and making a big impact. Lion raised an eyebrow. Thanks for pointing out the common ground between us. You're welcome. Ada's pinky curled into Lyon's palm. Since they're all celebrating, how about tonight we... Old place, 
Lion responded immediately. Got it, boss. Ada winked at him. However, the celebration Tony had been looking forward to never happened in the end. In the post-apocalyptic environment, there weren't enough resources or time to waste on such things. Besides, upon hearing the news that a new virus had been successfully developed, no one was willing to relax just yet. Everyone was filled with energy, their hearts burning with hope. They couldn't wait to get injected with the new virus and charge out to reclaim lost territories. The first batch of volunteers for the experiment was quickly filled. When asked, not a single person in the meeting room hesitated for even a second. They weren't afraid of dying in the lab. They only feared the experiment might not yield the desired results. The public servants Jill had recruited were indeed warriors ready to sacrifice themselves for the greater good. In the end, the order of participation was decided by drawing lots. Leon S. Kennedy This newly appointed officer, who had just earned the honorable nickname Three Light from the Saviors at the banquet two days ago, was lucky enough to be chosen first, half an hour later. In front of a sealed laboratory in the underground research facility, several people were closely watching Kennedy on the other side of the high-strength glass. He was strapped to the test bed, Tubes filled with nutrient fluids connected all over his body, while Lion, dressed in protective gear, was administering the final version of the S-Virus. As the golden viral serum was injected into Kennedy's body, the volunteers waiting outside clenched their fists one by one. Three Light, hang in there. You can definitely do it. Three Lay, to be given such a nickname by Mr. Lion, you can't fail now. At the banquet two days ago, Kennedy had shyly asked Lyon to give him a nickname. After serious thought, Lon had said that Kennedy embodied bright light, sunlight, and a gentle glow, and therefore, the only fitting nickname was Three Light, and so Kennedy's nickname was decided. Ever since the banquet, Kennedy had proudly referred to himself as Three Light Kennedy. This nickname had made everyone at the police station envious. Now, every day when they saw Kennedy, they'd grab him by the neck and teasingly throw a few jealous remarks his way. In the laboratory, after the virus serum was injected into Kennedy, there was a brief moment of calm before his veins suddenly bulged, his muscles swelled, and he let out a harrowing scream. Even restrained by the steel shackles, his back arched upward with force, almost breaking free. Lion, with quick reflexes, pressed him back onto the test bed, maintaining a calm expression despite Kennedy's agonizing howls. For about five minutes, Kennedy screamed in agony, and for five minutes, everyone outside the lab watched with bated breath. Once Kennedy finally calmed down, Lyon used his X-ray vision to scan his body, then checked his bones and muscles with a firm squeeze. He's good to go. The experiment is successful. The virus enhancement went smoothly, Ka, with no signs of mutation. Next. Lyon concluded, then lifted the now much heavier Kennedy and placed him on a hospital bed outside the lab. At that moment, everyone erupted into cheers and celebration. The following experiments went much more smoothly. With Kennedy's experience as a reference, everyone was mentally prepared. Soon, Marvin, Elliot, the fat officer, Carlos, and others were injected with the final version of the S-Virus one by one. They all successfully underwent enhancement without any mutations. To improve efficiency, they joined Lyon in assisting with the virus injections. By nightfall, all personnel in the temporary headquarters of the Colorado Commonwealth had completed their virus injections. Out of the more than 1,500 people, only one showed signs of infection and mutation, but they recovered after being injected with the antivirus serum. For this unfortunate individual, Leon could only offer a simple, good luck. Those who escaped mutation by injecting the antivirus serum had already developed antibodies, meaning they would no longer be able to undergo another round of virus enhancement. In the upcoming era of global evolution, these individuals were destined to be left behind by the times. If they needed someone to blame, they could only curse the world's consciousness. After arranging for all those who had been enhanced by the virus to remain in the research facility for observation, Lyon, accompanied by Ada, Jill, and Sherry, returned to the lab once more. This time, Lyon injected the three of them with the SS2 serum, which was infused with the characteristics of the extremist virus. After the serum was injected, all three of them developed super-regenerative abilities. 
except for Sherry, who was still growing. Jill and Ada, however, had transformed into near superhuman beings, with strength exceeding 40 tons and running speeds approaching the speed of sound. Moreover, their physical capabilities would continue to rise over time. What surprised Lyon was that, after hearing the world consciousness's explanation about the evolutionary serum, all three of them expressed understanding. They even believed that the potential for continued evolution in the world shouldn't be stifled. This made Lyon reflect, wondering if he had misunderstood the world consciousness too deeply. Perhaps its intentions weren't as extreme as he had thought? In the days that followed, after the Stark brothers observed and confirmed that all the enhanced individuals showed no signs of abnormalities, the temporary government Jill had established began to widely distribute the final version of the S-virus throughout the city. For any, one willing to undergo the virus enhancement, the government provided a comprehensive set of services. The people in the city clearly had great trust in the temporary government. As soon as the announcement was made, the registration sites were packed with people. Some people even began calling Jill the goddess of victory, shouting that they were willing to do anything for her. Over the past month, Jill had consistently been at the forefront, shielding everyone from deadly attacks by the super zombies. She had become the heart and soul of the nation. Meanwhile, as the virus enhancement efforts in Raccoon City were in full swing, Lion and Tony completed the injection experiments for the SS3 serum.